Hi there, it's Luke from Elite Helicopters and today we're going to be taking you through the startup and shutdown procedure for the Robinson R44 Raven 2 helicopter. Let's get into it. Okay, so here we go. We've got our checklist ready to go. The first item on the checklist is blades untied and level. So looking at the front of the blade, it's not tied down to the bubble. At the back of the blade, it's not tied down either. Perfect. Pedals adjusted. So the pedals can be adjusted in the R44. You'll see there's a pin that can be taken out and you can make the pedals come slightly closer or further away. They're set to the uh, tallest setting at the moment, so they're all adjusted as I want them. Seat belts fastened, it says all seat belts fastened. And the reason for that is to make sure that your passengers have got their seat belts fastened as well, and there's not seat belts hanging out the door, okay? Next thing on the list is the cyclic and collective friction off. So I'm gonna put my checklist down. With my right hand, I'm gonna hold the cyclic left hand goes on the collective so left hand i can remove the friction off the cyclic here all the way anti-clockwise and i'm going to remove the friction off the collective by moving this little wheel forward if you forget there's a little arrow here which says friction increase towards the back friction off is the wheel forward so the frictions are off next item in my checklist cyclic collective throttle pedals full travel free so what we're doing is we're checking there's no obstructions in the controls at all we can move them to their full extent cyclic big nice circle all the way around you might have to get your passenger to move their leg out of the way all the way around that's great back to the center collective all the way up and down you see the blades changing their angle of attack fall back down pedals all the way left and right they can move freely and throttle fully open fully closed okay that's all good frictions back on so left hand again tightening my friction up on my cyclic make sure the uh, cyclic is in this central position and then collective friction back on wheel to the back next item on the checklist is the uh, rotor brake so rotor brake is disengaged as you can see at the moment it's hanging down so it is actually engaged holding the blades where they are. To disengage this, I'm just gonna pull it slightly and move it forward a bit, and then let the handle go up, that's disengaged. The aircraft won't start when the uh, rotor brake is engaged. Next is the circuit breakers in. So down in front of you, you'll see a load of circuit breakers. Now, what you're checking here is that any of them popped out. So if I pop one out for you so you can have a look, you'll see the difference, you can see that quite clearly from the side see a white area where it's popped out push it back down if they pop out then there's something wrong with that individual circuit should be looked at the next thing is the landing light needs to be off so landing light is situated here on most 44s so down is off it's very clearly marked pretty straightforward the next clutch disengaged here is your clutch switch you can see engaged is up disengaged is down it's disengaged at the moment which is what we want hydraulics on so not a great design this. We've got a hydraulic switch which is up is on, down is off. So we want that to be on. Don't accidentally flick that during flight because the controls will be quite stiff and hard to maneuver. So make sure that's in the on position. Next is the governor. Again, this is a bit of a tricky one to see. The switch is at the end of the collective. So governor on is towards me. So what you can do to check this, if I just flick the master switch on, there's actually a governor on off, off light just here. So if I turn it off, you'll see the light. And also there's a sticker which is um, slightly worn off here, but it says governor off towards your passenger and on towards the pilot. Right, so we're ready to start. The next section is engine start and run up. First, area clear. So, big shout out to Master battery on. The red switch there just by the key, that needs to be the on position. Next, strobe light on. So usually we leave the strobe light switch on because it turns off with the master switch anyway. So usually that's left in the on position. 
Next, throttle is closed. Very, very important. Make sure this throttle is fully closed. That's all the way towards you. There is an over travel spring there, so just to turn it onto the over travel spring just to make sure that is closed. Because if you start the engine with the throttle open, you can cause damage to the aircraft. Next is mixture full rich. So I'm going to put my checklist down. I'm going to use my left hand. In order to move the mixture, we need to press in this silver button. So press it in, mixture full rich. Next is the ignition switch so we're going to prime the engine we're going to put some fuel in in this helicopter to help it start so how long do we prime it for it depends on um, if it's been running today already so this helicopter has been running if it hasn't been running i usually say about six or seven seconds of prime if it has been running and it's very warm it doesn't even need a prime if it's very warm so somewhere between that today so we'll probably give it about three seconds of prime one two three so we've primed the engine for three seconds and the key is on both make sure it's gone to the both position next on the list mixture full lean so we're going to pull the mixture all the way back out to the lean position so this next part of the checklist is done quite quickly so this red line here is done quite quickly so all within about five seconds we're going to press the starter button on the end of the collective with our left hand, with our right hand on the mixture. When the engine fires, we're going to push in the mixture full rich, and then we're basically going to do, I like to call it a Z pattern. So I go across here and I turn everything on. So alternator, clutch, nav lights if we need them. And then I go across here to the oil pressure, make sure that's above the red line. I'll go up here to the uh, engine RPM to make sure we've got 50 to 60%. And then I'll go up here to the blade to make sure the blades are turning within five seconds. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a Z pattern. So let's get on to it. So left hand on the collective, the start button is on the end of the collective. There is another one on the side of the side link as well. So here we go. I'm going to press this and the engine will start to fire. Okay, so we've got the aircraft started now. And the engine RPM is between 50 and 60%. Here. Just adjusting the radio there so you can hear me clearly. So we've gone through all of this section here already. So mixture full rich, we did that. Starter light was out. Engine RPM set 50 to 60%. Alternator switch on. We've done that, clutch switch engage, oil pressure with over the red line with 25 PSI within 30 seconds, blades turning within five seconds. So all that we've all done. Avionics and headsets, obviously headsets on. Avionics means your radio and your transponder. So transponder can go to uh, alt altitude, which is ALT. Okay, so next is, put that back on. Next is the mixture guard, make sure that is back on. We don't want to accidentally pull that in flight. Mixture guard is on. Clutch light is out. So the clutch light is definitely out already. That usually takes about 30 seconds. Next thing in the list is warm up the a, a, a RPM up to between 60 and 70%, which we're doing there, perfect. And we're waiting for the engine gauges to be in the green. So next item, engine gauges, green. We're just waiting for the cylinder head temperature to uh, go into the green there. It can take a minute or two, especially on a cold day. Okay, fantastic. So we've got the cylinder head temperature in the green now. Next part of the checklist is the mag drop at 75% RPM. So we're going to take the RPM up to 75% using our throttle, 
gentle twist away from me just to get the RPM up to 75%. Fantastic. The next thing is I'm going to use my right hand to do a mag check or a magneto check. What we do here is we're going to turn the key from both to left for two seconds and observe the, the uh, tachometer to make sure that it uh, doesn't drop more than 7% in two seconds. So here we go, we're going to turn it to the left for two seconds. 1,000, 2,000, and back to both. It only drops around about 1 or 2%, which is fantastic. This time we're going to check the right magneto, being very careful that we don't turn it to the off position. So it's just two clicks, not three clicks. Here we go. 1,000, 2,000, back to both. Only dropped again, 2 or 3% which is fantastic. If you do that and you, there's no change in RPM, that's an issue. If you do it and there's a huge change in RPM, more than 7%, that again is an issue. You need to talk to the engineer. Okay, so just confirming the key is back on both. Yes, it is. Fantastic. Moving on. Sprag clutch check. So here we're going to check that the needle slipped when the engine throt when the throttle is closed, we're going to check that the uh, needles are split. So I'm going to take the RPM just under 80% and then go off quickly with the throttle. Here we go. Off quickly towards me. Not much of a split there, so do you know what? I'm going to do it again from a slightly higher RPM. There we go. We've got our needle split this time. Sometimes you have to do it from a slightly higher RPM just to get your needle split. And then we've got the RPM back at 70%. Next item in the checklist is the doors all closed and latched. Handle back and down, that's nice and latched. Check the other doors as well, back and all the doors are latched, that's great. Moving on, so we need to know how much power we can use today, so we're going to use the limit map chart above our head. First thing we need to do is see the temperature, which is about 20 degrees today. We can see 20 degrees sea level. We can pull 22.9 inches on our manifold pressure gauge continuously, or we can have 2.8 to that, which is 25.7 uh, on our manifold pressure gauge, which we can pull for five minutes. So once again, 22.9 continuously or 25.7 for five minutes. Next, we're going to listen to the ATIS and do our radio call. Once we've done our, our radio call, our ground call, the next is the cyclic and collective frictions go off. So again, in my left, left hand, I'm using my left hand to remove the frictions of the cyclic, twist the cyclic friction all the way to the left. Now, I'm holding the cyclic with my right hand. I can't let go of this now because it's just going to fall either way and the blades are turning and that's going to tilt the rotor disc, so keep a good hold of that in my right hand. With my left hand, I'm going to, going to remove the friction of the collective. Okay, again, keeping my hand on this collective now, I don't want it to rise um, on its own. Next thing in the list is the hydraulics check. So, the hydraulic switch is here. I'm just going to do little small circles to make sure the hydraulics are working. Yes, they are. It's nice and free. If I flick the hydraulics off, I do the same thing. I've met with a lot more resistance, the hydraulics are not working. I can check the switch system by pulling the circuit breaker down here, which is marked HYD. Pull that, and then the hydraulics are restored. Okay, put the circuit breaker back in. Flick the hydraulics back on. Do confirm that is restored before we take off. Okay, hydraulics are restored. Next, governor is on. We leave it on already, that's fine. Throttle increase to 102%. Okay, so we're left hand on the throttle. I'm going to allow the RPM to go up to 102%. So the key with this, don't let it just run away it's from itself. You've got to actually physically restrict the throttle as it gets above 80%. The governor will take over and you're going to physically restrict the throttle by holding it quite tight. So it's still opening, but nice and slowly. So I've got a good grip of that. The RPM's just coming up nice and slowly. And we're going to make sure that it settles about 102% in the green. The final thing we're going to do is the warning lights are out. And we're going to check the low RPM warning system. So how I do this is I'm going to roll down the throttle slightly until the RPM is below 97%. So the RPM is below 97%. I'm going to hold the throttle there 
I'm going to raise the collective just slightly. Morning light comes on, and then I'm going to let the throttle go back up slightly. It should come out. It should go out at 97%. There it is, and collective fall back down. And that's it. We are ready to go. Okay, so we've landed the aircraft. First thing we're going to do, shut down procedure, is collective full down. And we're going to wind down the throttle down to 70% RPM. Nice and stable, 60 to 70%. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the friction on the collective. So left hand, friction on the collective, that's now safe. And friction on my cyclic. Make sure the cyclic's in the central position, otherwise you'll start to get a vibration throughout the aircraft. Okay, cyclic centered and friction on, pedals neutral. So on the ground, pedals neutral is slightly right foot forward, just about an inch or so like that. Landing lights are off. Yep, we've switched the landing lights off, which is just a little switch on the cyclic. Cylinder head temperature drop, so we're waiting for the cylinder head temperature here for the needle to be past the three. So if you can see the three on the 350, that's cool enough and we can move on to the next part. The next part of the checklist is throttle close. So again, with my left hand on the throttle, I'm gonna twist the throttle all the way towards me, which is gonna close the throttle and the RPM's gonna come down. Next is clutch disengage. So two part motion, you're gonna lift the cover and then flick the switch down. You'll see the clutch light will illuminate and the fuel auxiliary fuel pump light will come on as well. When you've done that, you're gonna wait 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, we can pull the mixture. So while you're waiting, we can take the guard off the mixture. Put that down, it's quite delicate that, so just be careful with that. After 30 seconds, so we're only about 15 seconds so far, we're gonna pull the mixture and we can use the silver button to do that. 20 seconds. this with all your force, basically the weight of your arm, I like to use for about 5-10 seconds and then give it a little bit of a break for a few seconds and then do it again. So we're aiming to stop the blade forward and backwards, we have one blade over the front and one blade over the tail. It just looks really professional. And how you do that is you get the uh, blades to a really really slow pace and then you just give it a little bit of a pull when it gets to this point. So get the blades nice and slow. Like this. Go nice and slow now. And then a little bit of a pull just before it gets to the front. And then we can we can lock the rotor brake in. The final thing to do is to the key needs to go to the off position. The alternator can be turned off. Nav lights turned off, the clutch light is out, and the master switch off 